talked to uh, Mike Alder earlier today, and he was talking about you know like. A lot of times, when when it's heavy volume and it's just it's a customer, they're a widget, they're a thing. There there's no humanity, right? They're just on the sure. conveyor belt. And you're taking these cor- cases to court. You're trying them. You're, you're and and you're getting maximum value for the client. Client first. What? Let, let's break this down. And forgive me because I'm not a trial attorney, so I'm gonna have you lead me a little bit here, but. What what have you learned? First, I guess let's start on like the the deposition side. You know what? How do you give a good deposition? Like what goes into that? What role does it play in the case? Let's start there. I mean, Chris, that is a great question. Okay, because you know I recently spoke at the CAW convention, which is the California Applicants Attorneys Association, and. You know, they, they put me in, in a type of bubble where it's like, Keith, you're going to be one of our featured speakers. And so this last one, it was in January, and I didn't realize that I was like double booked for that weekend. And it was my niece had a party in Chicago that I had to be to. I could not miss out on a Saturday party. So I was supposed to speak at the prime time on Saturday. And so I called up the convention and I said, look, I didn't realize that I double booked myself. If you want me to speak, we have to change it. She said, we've already made the program, right? And I said, look, I'm ready. to. I, I got a great PowerPoint. People are going to learn. And that's one thing I love about speaking is how can I help you as a lawyer doing what we do make money? How can I help you better your case for your client so that your client gets more benefits and so they switched my speaking time and so I was speaking on denied death claims in workers compensation you want to talk about a morbid subject holy cow and part of the success that I've had in these denied death claims because if you think about it for a minute it's like this somebody dies at work That's it. It's exclusive remedy. They were in the course and scope of their employment. But there are certain situations where someone might have a heart attack at work. Now we've got to establish that the work somehow caused the heart attack. When you talk about depositions, I love taking depositions. There's nothing better than that art of cross-examination. It's like a samurai with a sword. And I literally go in and I'll have like associates. I'll be like, hey, I've got a great one today. I'm so fired up. I mean, literally, after 34 years of doing this, I get fired up to where I'll have two or three lawyers sitting in my office right there just so they can see the preparation, how I prepare for a deposition, how I know my facts, how I get to that point where it's like, okay, This person had so much stress because they had fired two people because of this, this, and this. And I dive as deep as I can into those records. I don't care if it's a thousand pages. That's our obligation. These people that have come to us, the survivors, the widow, the children, they're relying on us. The insurance companies already turned their back and said, no, he did not die as a result of this injury. I had a case, this is unreal. This guy goes to work and he is a sewage guy. So he's got to go down into those sewers. He lifts the cap up and he gets there early. They, they call him up and they say, the city, they call him up, say, hey, we need you there. We got a problem. He gets there first. His partner shows up. My guy goes into the hole, comes out when his partner comes up. He goes, I think I got bit by a spider. A spider bite. Now, he's not thinking in five days I'm going to die. He's thinking, ouch, I got bit by a spider. And he shows the guy. He shows him. He says, look, I got bit by a spider. Five days later, I think it was about five days, he dies of a massive infection. 
Now, the coroner does an autopsy, says he died of an infection from a spider bite, death certificate, cause of death. I mean, it couldn't be more clear. But of course, in the work comp arena, they can deny whatever they want. And so I had to take deposition upon depositions. And I just spoke about this case in that seminar that I did. And there was probably, Chris, 1,200 to 1,400 people there. So I said, look, when you're taking these depositions, you have to continue to just pile it on until they finally, they wave that white flag. And until they're ready to surrender, you keep going. Depos the taking of depositions is crucial on denied claims when it comes to these types of things. Or even an accepted case, when you take the deposition of a doctor, you have to know that medicine as good as that doctor. And it's called research. It's called time and energy. It's funny. I always say this. People say, oh my gosh, you're so smart. You? I say, you know what? I'll never say I'm the smartest guy in the room. I just won't. I will say I'm the hardest working guy in the room. Okay? So that's where it comes from. I, I just won't quit. There's no quit. I just won't stop until I get my clients what they need. I've had situations where my client's been denied wheelchairs. A new wheelchair. It's breaking. No, we're not giving it to you. Okay, let's go to court. And then, of course, the client, the client will get that wheelchair. But that's what I deal with Unreal. on a daily basis. Unreal. And there, there's so much here. The... Um... <laughs> And just the discipline, the the going the extra mile to to do all this, you know, and you have a deep expertise of workers' comp, right? And litigating workers' comp. Do you think to get this expertise to to be? Do you, are you kind of forced to niche to force to find a focus to force, and and that brings out the the extra one to ten percent that's to get the maximum value. Can a trial attorney cover a broad area? You know, you know or, or... I mean, that's a great question because, you know, I started out doing only personal injury cases. That's mm -hmm. it. And so I've tried over 20 civil jury trials. That's unique for anyone. First off, in this day and age, it's difficult to get into a jury trial, Right. But then for me to take that jury trial experience and bring it over to a work comp arena, which is only being tried to a commissioner. So it's a bench trial. And to have those skills, that skill set of being in front of 12 people and now transferring that over to a judge and making that judge feel what the client feels, see what the client sees. I had a case where my client had a massive brain injury and they took part of his skull out. And so when I brought him up to the stand, not necessarily to testify, but I wanted the judge to see the scars on his head. And so I had the judge take judicial notice. I said, Your Honor, I, I know this is un, unusual to do, but I'd like, you to, I'd like my client to come up to the bench and you to see and we'll describe where the scarring is on his head and he has an indentation over his left temple. It was so compelling that when the judge did it, I mean, you could see he was just engaged. And then, of course, the issue was, was my client 100% disabled because of that brain injury? The insurance company said, no, he wasn't, that he could work. And the judge said, absolutely, we agree with Mr. Moore. There's no doubt that he is 100% disabled. So I think really the skill set of having tried as many jury trials, being a member of the American Board of Trial Advocates, ABOTA, it's what really is unique for me because I've done probably over 250 work comp trials. Wow. I, I don't know anyone in the country 
And I go to the national board meetings now for ABOTA, and they do these national trips. And I've talked to people, and they're like, wait a second, you've tried jury trials and you do workers' comp? I mean, you're a unicorn. So it's been a great mix with my partner, Greg Bentley, who only does personal injury, massive cases, incredible trial lawyer. And, you know, I had the benefit when Greg and I first became uh, partners, actually before that, when we first became friends. I'm going to go way back in time if that's okay, Chris. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder from asking questions, but in 2007, me and Mr. Bentley met up in Sacramento. Uh, we were lobbying. I was next in line for the president of the Orange County Trial Lawyers Association. He was coming up the chain as the Consumer Attorneys of California president. He, he was u uber connected. You know, I was more of a local kind of guy. He was the statewide. And uh, we just hit it off as friends. And then we started going out as friends and things. And next thing you know, he's referring me work comp cases. And I'm saying, he's saying, hey, instead of referring me to the PI case, why don't we try that case together? And so we actually got to do a few cases which were kind of like, you know, little starters for us. And one in particular was this client came to me and she was referred by another attorney, nice guy, but just didn't do personal injury cases. And she said, Keith, I slipped and fell at the grocery store. And she prefaced this by saying to me, case might be too small for you, but I was told you're really good. So I'd like to know if you can handle my case. I said, you know what, Ann? I'm going to help you. And so it was a grocery store case. She had a knee injury. She was taking pain medication. She goes to the pain management doctor. And as she's in the office, it's a true story, the pain medicine was affecting an ulcer in her stomach and caused an ulcer that she fainted in the doctor's office, broke both orbitas, fractures throughout her face. So... I saw her. She came in. I said, oh, my God, what happened to your face, Ann? She said, well, the medication caused me to faint. I fell flat on my face at the doctor's office. I said, oh, my God, this would be a great case for me and Greg to try. Okay? So I was out to dinner with Greg, and, you know, of course, he's so enthusiastic. He loves the law. Loves what he he's like, so do, we have any, do you have any cases we could try together, right? And we're just friends. And I said, I think I got one. And I showed him the picture of the x-ray of her face. And he just went, I'm in. So we must have taken, he and I, 10, 15 depositions in that case. Slip and fall? They asked us to go to mediation. We didn't want to go. Partly because we really wanted to try the case together, right? Mm -hmm. But got to do it. So we go to mediation. They paid us $2.1 million on a slip and fall that originally I thought was worth, you know, minimal. Then we, we were disappointed, to be honest, because we wanted to try it. But the client was thrilled, and that was the main, main thing. She was as happy as an individual could ever be. So I had another case that this little young 16-year-old kid got his hand caught in a disc sander. And I said, you know what, Greg? I think I got one. And he said, all right, let me hear the facts. And I tell him the story, right? And we're storytellers, you know. Mm -hmm. We've got to lay it on. So we're laying it on. I'm laying it on. He said, well, what's the offer? There's got to be a good offer on the case. I said, uh, school district's offering $15,000. He's like, that's it? I said, that's it, fifteen. He said, all right, let's take it on. We went to trial in that case. I believe on the day of trial, they offered us 150000 Some people might say, well, it's a tough liability case. School district in Orange County. Is a jury going to award money against the school district? 
we said, we're going forward. We tell the client the risks, the benefits, the whole nine. Jury came back with $2.8 million. Wow. Okay? And so in that situation, we knew, he and I knew we had something good. And from there, it was just a matter of time before we knew that relationship of the PI, the work comp, his trial skill set, my skill set, our people skill set would mend together and we could become a real driving force in not only Orange County, but in the state of California. And that's what we've done. Amazing reputation, amazing results. And, you know, you guys have been at it for, for I believe, over 30 years now. Is that correct? 33 years? Well, and... I'm going to let you in on a secret, okay? <laughs> First off, I don't dye my hair. I'm actually older than Greg, okay? So he might, you know, he's got me in gray hair, but I'm turning 60 in April, April 10th, in case anybody wants to send a birthday wish. <laughs> um, but April 10th, I'll be 60, and then he's just turned 59. So I got one year on him, but I've been doing this for 34 years. And uh, it's hard to say, but I think my enthusiasm gets more and more as time goes on. 